Zidon Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. In today's video, we're talking about Star Wars Ronin. And oh my gosh, this book is amazing. Oh, fudge. There is a lot that I could say about this, but I don't want to spoil really anything about this book because it's honestly one of the best books that i have ever listened to and yes i did say listen to i didn't like fully read the entire book i did read a lot of it but i didn't listen to it, but i mostly listened to it um basically i uh i love this book a lot and i want to talk about why i love this book so much so firstly what is this book about for uh, it is about the Ronin from Star Wars Visions and his quest to basically save the world from his mistakes that he made long ago. Uh, I'm not going to go much more in depth with what his, what all that is, but if you've seen Visions, then you know at least a little bit about what exactly was going on. And if you liked that first episode, that is what this is, but more. <laughs> And by more, I mean a lot more. They did so much with this story and delved so deeply into these characters that, honestly, I, I loved it just so much. <laughs> uh, basically, the first chapter slash two chapters, I think, I'm not 100% certain. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think probably... Probably chapter, uh, probably two, but uh, probably the first two chapters of this are that first episode of Ro of Visions. That's it. That's all that that first episode was. This book is forty four chapters long, <laughs> so if you can understand like how big of a deal that is. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. This book is really, really a lot more. <laughs> like just thinking about that, that basically means that this could be turned into at least a full a uh, full season, if not like a a full freaking movie, maybe two movies. I actually think that that would probably be the better option because there's a lot in this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and. I think that it's also pretty good that they didn't really introduce every single character that was in those first two chapters in the actual show itself. They actually avoided a, a one character specifically who is a main character, and that is the witch. And that's primarily... I, I understand why they would avoid that, because it you don't just leave a character on... Uh, like, if you're going to make a move... Uh, if you're going to make a show... And you're going to introduce this character who is who sounds like pure evil, and the character clearly hates them. You don't just do it for one little thing. You need to have more. And they, I think they smartly chose not to have that in the actual episode. Because there's a lot that is actually in this book that honestly was too much for visions and they probably will never do all of what visions had all of what this did in a visions thing if it's going to be getting anything it's going to be a uh show on disney plus for its entirety or it's going to get a actual freaking movie because it or two because it deserves it it's that good um <laughs> but basically the Ronin is trying to gather up all of the uh, the dark crystals to eventually get them to some place safe. Get them to a place where they will be away from other people so that they won't continue to spread their hate. The Sith won't continue to be an evil scourge on the galaxy, which I know it's ironic considering the fact that he is a Sith. But basically, the whole point of this series is that he's trying to redeem himself for his mistakes in his past. I'm not going to reveal what those mistakes were, because that is in the book, but it's also very late in the book, so spoilers. <laughs> um, but along the way, he and B-556 continue on their mission to 
uh, and they run across this c- character called the Traveler. And the Traveler is a very special alien, but he, uh, we start to we meet him when he's wearing a fox mask to basically completely hide his face or their face. Sorry, they don't have a gender, um, <laughs> but yeah. So the Traveler is one of the most interesting characters, but he also helps. Uh, Grim. I'm just gonna call him Grim because that's a, a name that somebody gives him later, but um. He shows that there is a way to basically stop all of this from continuing, from the problem that has been arising to end, and that is that people are who are specifically Sith who are dying are coming back to life and causing huge problems for the world, and one such a person is the Sith that he kills in that town. Uh, she can, she follows them, starts off being called the Bandit, but her actual name is Koru, and she basically becomes uh, the main antagonist for the first half of the book, I'd say, before becoming an ally later down the line. Um, but she is... She's a lot, <laughs> to be put bluntly. Um... <laughs> She causes problems for the uh, for the characters for quite a while, and eventually they make their way to a space station, or not to a space station, to a spaceport, where they uh, where the traveler and Grimm make their way to a very specific ship that the traveler has found, and they escape on the old crow, which is piloted by Akia, and I'm forgetting what her name is right now, but there's uh, another lady who uh, they. They often call her Granny, um, but she's, uh, but she's basically another main character, and that is our main cast for the majority of this book. Those six characters: the Ronin, the Traveler, B five fifty six, Koru, Akia, and Granny. I always forget what her name is, um, but they are the main cast, and they travel the world to, or the multiple worlds to eventually get all of the kyber crystals to some place where they can be buried and basically to put the spirits of the different Jedi and Sith to rest and basically take them back to the home world of the Jedi, at least in this universe. Um, (laughs) Which, keep in mind, yes, this is (laughs) non-canonical. This is very, very different. Um, But in order to do that, they have to first go to a paradise plant, which is basically... Uh, completely overrun by Taurus, <laughs> and they have to get a very specific crystal in order to fix something there, and it that causes issues. Obviously, we get a whole new group of villains, sort of, um, <laughs> which are the Jedi, and it's just like, what? <laughs> and that's one of the things that I really love about this book, is that unlike many other Star Wars stories, the Jedi aren't the good guys. Um, they're not evil by any standard, and the Traveler happens to have been an ex-Jedi, but they're not evil. The, the, the Jedi are not evil, but the point is the Sith aren't either. And that is the whole point of this book, is to understand the shades of grey, and... No matter who you are, sometimes you're not going to agree with people. Um, Basically, in this universe, the Sith didn't agree with the Jedi for being member... uh, For basically being the slaves to the Emperor or whatever. Um, And so they wanted to continue to be uh, force wielders without necessarily having to obey a very strict government. So they made their own path. And that's kind of the point of the entire story, is that there are shades of grey. Just because you are seen by people as being evil doesn't necessarily mean that you're evil. Sometimes you make bad decisions. And that's honestly something that Star Wars has been doing a lot lately, is that the Jedi aren't the good guys and neither are the Sith. Neither side can truly be the good guys 
and neither side can truly be the bad guys because in all truth there needs to be a balance too much uh, strictly following the rules no matter what that means is going to end up hurting people and yet uh but also not obeying any rules and making things truly awful for people that's not going to help anyone either and that is the biggest issue you have to find a proper balance you can't you can't constantly follow the rules because sometimes the rules are not actually going to be the most helpful in every single situation honestly think about that like there are many times throughout history, and I'm not going to go over them, but the point is that there are many times throughout history where people have done things that uh, are considered sinful or evil, but they've done it for good reasons, and if they hadn't, then there would be a lot more people dead. People would not be in good shape. People would be in terrible terrible just everything would be awful let's let's be honest because some people are not good so sometimes you have to make some changes to what you believe in order to keep them safe like honestly think about that like if someone is trying to hurt your friend and you tell them where your friend is you are basically killing your friend and that is the point that this story is trying to get across. That you can't always follow the exact rules because sometimes they're going to be they're going to be people who will use those rules against you and will end up hurting you. And they understand that. Star Wars has been doing this for a while now. Ezra is not a Jedi. <laughs> he is not a Sith. He has aspects of both. Uh, Ahsoka also has aspects of both. Sure, she's a lot more Jedi than she is, uh, than Ezra is, but she also does dabble in certain aspects of the dark side. And need I remind you that frickin' Rey do has tapped into the dark side very clearly and has used force lightning i know that some people are gonna be like you can't talk about ray because she is not real and blah 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 and people being dicks about that whole series um <laughs> but the point still remains that there are it's a balancing act you can't have stories that frame one side as always being the good and one side is always being the bad, because the real world doesn't work like that. And that's something that people have been starting to realize, especially lately, is that all sides have a bit of gray in them. Nothing is truly good, and nothing is truly evil. Especially not in this world. So, how do writers create this? They show the good in the people who are seen as evil. Such as with Ronan. And honestly, I love I love this story. Seriously. If you ever get the chance to listen to it or read it, please do, because it is absolutely one of the best reads I've had in a while. I just finished it a little while ago, and honestly, I just love the entirety of this story, and I want them to do more with it because it's amazing. Like, honestly, if the, cre if the writer actually decided to make a sequel to this book, I would pick it up in a heartbeat because it is amazing and I need to read more. <laughs> um, same goes for uh, if Disney decides to make this into an actual series or a movie, I'd be fine with a movie. Certain things could absolutely be cut out. Um, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, there's a lot in this book that is not needed. Um... <laughs> But at the same time, like, yeah, you, you kind it. Please make this into a movie or a show, Disney. I, I'm, I'm asking you. And uh, if you need someone to play like some of these characters, like, 
Hi, I, I, I'm Electro Ninja. You can hire me, please. <laughs> uh, like, I, I actually would love to play the Traveler because he's, uh, or they're really cool. Um, because, like, he's a Jedi, but he's not good. <laughs> he is not a good guy in certain moments. And he is not a bad guy, and I love that that uh, that whole character. Uh, obviously, currently they already have a Ronin. They already have um, Koru and other character, and they obviously the other two characters are female. So that that's kind of putting that out of the way. But <laughs> I'm just saying it would be fun. But anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. If you do have a theory, make sure to say theory review somewhere in your comment. Read this book. Read my book as well. Link is in the description. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!